Hi, Facebook. Hello, hello, Facebook. So we got sale going. Hey, you guys, you know, normally whenever we do a Facebook Live, there's all kinds of we really don't care, right? Like we're gonna come on Suze and we're gonna just kind of do our thing. We're gonna hopefully make you laugh a little bit. We're, you know, that's just how we roll, right? I mean, like if you guys are our friend on Facebook, you know that that is us, okay? And so like this part and Real tonight- quickly, what, I Suze? appear like an angel because I'm lit. Do we see this? I'm lit up like an angel Susie, and you're Susie, over there in the dark. I'm not lit anymore. Is this portal? <laughs> He's not lit anymore. Hey, you guys, oh we got gosh. a story to tell y'all. You guys know us you. well enough to know that we have to laugh, and there's like, a little bit of nerves our, with a, this. So. It's like our default is to go to laughs. Uh, but, you know, what we're about to tell you guys is, you know, I, we wrote a book, okay? And, like, when we share this story with you guys tonight, man, we are hoping that it helps some people. I, I got to tell you that, like, this is the most, I don't get nervous. Oh, I'm so nervous. I do, and apparently my hair turns into an oil fest when I get nervous. Hi, fun Phillip. fact, fun fact. Hey, you know, tonight <laughs> is something that if you guys have ever, if you followed us on Facebook, if you're our friend through Facebook, and you've ever shared what one of- What if they don't of, like us okay, on Okay, it's okay, fine. We're still gonna ask <laughs> for your help. Um, but if you've never, if you've ever shared one of our posts or one of our funnies or something like that, I'm asking y'all tonight to help us by sharing this video. Okay, so like you'll be doing us a major solid by by sharing this. We're gonna we're gonna tell you guys our just brief overview of why we wrote a book, um, what the goal is on the book. We're gonna touch base on some of the story, but it's part of our story that has been behind the scenes that we have needed to share for a long time. Don't you think, Suze? Oh yeah, so God has been putting this, well we found it's on our hearts to share for a long time. Carrie, look Carrie. at what I have. Carrie, Because I have Legit. no box of tissues, of Legit. course, but I have yeah. toilet paper. Yeah. So God put this on our hearts to share honestly a long time ago, yeah. like a long time ago. Yeah. And, um, but we needed the timing to be right. Yep. And y'all, writing a book is not easy. Like you have to really make some time for that. Yeah. So, so that took a little while. Writing yeah. The Hi book. Shelly, how are you? And so like, we want you guys to share this. Like I wanna, we're hoping so bad that our message gets out because when you guys, uh, when you read this book and you see the miracle that has happened in our lives, um, it, there is no other answer but God. Like, there is no other answer. Oh, it's all God. It, yeah. All God. And I think that some of you guys, like, I, some people had told us when we were telling them about, we were kind of discussing the book option with us. They were telling us, they go, oh, don't air your dirty laundry. Don't share that with people. And so, like, so we would look at each other and we would feel like, well, we don't want to, like, uh, betray our children, right? We don't want them to, because Susie and I have decided a long time ago, especially after this event in our life, that we weren't going to care about what people thought of us anymore. And so we were going to share like who we are as people and not care about them. And so I told Susie, I go, well, why would we start now? You know, if we're willing to do this, if we're willing to put this out there and it had an impact on one person, one person that was stuck in the world of addiction, then we want our story to be told. And so we are just like, we've been praying about this like crazy. You should have seen us in the car before we hit go live, we're sitting here praying, going, Lord, give us the words to say, because we want him to be honored in all of this. Agreed, Suze. Oh, yeah. I'm already about to cry. Don't, Suze. <laughs> okay, so let's just get... I either cry or I laugh, y'all, so, so that's let's, pretty much let's... how it's going to go. So we have written a book, and the reason we wrote the book is we want to give people a clear path that we took that brought us and me into a world of sobriety, okay? Okay. And uh, just over six years ago, or just almost six years ago, I literally almost drank myself to death, okay? I mean, like, man, I, I can't even, it was such a dark, dark, dark place. The loneliest place, The uh, I could tell you stories, and you'll read it in the book when you start to hear the depths of um, pain, okay? The depths of struggle that were involved in this it was uh it was crazy and so like again i just want you guys to know that when we share this part of our lives some of you guys may be put off by us and you might go you know you should not have told them i don't know i just want you to know that we don't care so if you don't like us if you unfollow us if you unfriend us it's no problem 
I do want you guys to share this because if you know people that have struggled with addiction, they need to read our story. They need to read our story. They need to read our story because we've laid out the path that we took that's given us success. We've even been able to help some other friends of ours behind the scenes that have struggled and led them in that same general direction. Don't you agree? So you're already crying. I'm already crying. I know. <laughs> I can't help it. I knew all day that I would cry. I've been nervous all day that I would cry and here I am crying. So, Suze, share it like... Give us, give some thought. Like when we wrote the book, we wrote it like this. Susie is talking and then I'm talking. And Susie's talking and I'm talking. True. That's so it's, true. It's, that is how. It's, it's both. And I think this is something that is um, unique about our story is that you're going to get both perspectives. Uh, I know. You're going to get the perspective of the person that is trapped because that's the word you would use, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you get the person that, y'all, Chris has been my best friend since I met him, we were 19 and 21 at OU, class called Social Problems. I mean, come on, is God funny? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, God is funny. Yeah. And uh, I, when I say soulmates, I don't use that. I don't I, I don't think everybody's as lucky as we are. And um, we knew we were going to get married within a month. I think we were even talking about it maybe even earlier than that. Yeah. We grew up together. And so... Um, when you start watching the person that you love literally killing himself and you can't do anything about it, it is, it's the worst place. And, and not to mention that you have four kids who need you to be really strong for them and you have to keep carrying on with life. It's just a bad place. It's not a fun time. And here's what's so funny about Chris and I, I think y'all know this, like we love to have fun. We love fun. We love to be positive and we love to be grateful <laughs> and we like to do fun things. And while we've been writing this book, it has um, taken us back. There were days where we would write and Chris literally would just be like, I'm done, I'm done. And he would race out of the room. So it has been hard. It has taken us, and y'all have to know like, it, he doesn't like to go back down paths of hard things. No. And, and neither do I. I'm a conflict avoider. Yeah. <laughs> I am. And I got to tell you, like, uh, we had a counselor friend tell us. He was like, it's actually just so amazing that you guys stayed married. Because most couples would not stay married through that. Yeah. And um, uh, we had some bad, bad, bad times. Like, and darkness. Darkness. Does not even begin to describe it. But I will tell you, like, some of the best things ever came from that. And my relationship with the Lord, um, that is when, I mean, I was, I, I've always, I've been a Christian since I was eight and I, and I really was a Christian, uh, but I would gotten away from the Lord and this, during this time, like the Lord was what I had and my relationship took a whole new, um, level with the Lord. Yeah. And I would say the same for you. Oh, like for sure. A thousand percent. And that Did I is, talk enough? No. Should I be done? So, so, but listen, and so like when we decided that this is what we were going to do, we were, we were so cautious about it because I almost felt like a fraud by not telling y'all this part of the story. We Me wanted too. so bad because like, and it, 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 like I said, it had to be more than just a Facebook live. It had to be more than just a post. Oh, by the way, you know, Chris drank a ton. I mean, you know, it had to be something that we would hope would reach people. And then frankly, here's the real, this is the real kicker. If you get one thing, if you hear us say one thing, if you've ever, ever, ever thought, sometimes you might see us and think, man, they're so confident with their faith. They're so out there when they praise God because they, you know, and, and I've heard people say, hey, I really appreciate you being like that. I appreciate when you're on stage and you give it up to God. It is so much easier when you've experienced the power of God and he has saved you, when he has literally lifted me up from the depths of hell, picked me up, dusted me off, and I wandered back into the world. And some of y'all have never seen that part of our story. And so like when we tell you this, now it'll be easier to say, look, 
we were in this position where I used to do these things. I used to talk all the time. I remember I did some videos early on going, if you were my partying friend, you might be confused right now. <laughs> yeah, true. You might be confused. You're all this, you love the Lord. And then I'm thinking to myself, do they think that when I turn off the camera, I go back to living my life the way I always lived it? Because I don't. And I haven't for five years. I'm a totally different person. Totally different person. And so person. like now our goal and our goal with this book is to identify and help people that are stuck where we were stuck. And I say we because it was we. I mean, Susie loved me. I was stuck in a dark hole. And the only thing that I was feeding and cared about was my addiction. And so like, and, and like when you read the book, you'll, you'll see it from the time we met in college, you'll see the drinking and it starts moving forward until it's out of control. And I'm pouring vodka on my Cheerios. Oh, I mean, like, that's really what I, am I interrupting? No, go. That's really what I want to say is that addiction and alcoholism, they are sneaky. Y'all, nobody just wakes up one day and, and says, you know, I think I would like to ruin my life and become an addict now. Or, yeah. oh, I think I'm going to become an alcoholic. That would be fun. Yeah. Nobody does that. Yeah. And honestly, um, it's way more accepted in society to drink than not to drink. Yep. And so um, it, it was a gradual thing. Alcoholism is a progressive disease. And um, you'll know in the book. Um, and don't it, even get me started. When I found pain pills, that was a whole nother fun thing. It was excitement. And the pain pills were not that he went out seeking them. He had a um, root, canal. root canal. Yeah. And so, y'all, I, I have to tell you, we've now watched every drug documentary ever made. Um, and people don't set out to become addicted to pain pills. They don't. Um, that's a whole nother live yeah. that we could do. But they, um, people have surgeries. They have kidney stones. Uh, they, they hurt their back at work. Yeah. And they start taking pain pills. And the next thing they know... They're they're out of heroin. control yeah, it's and crazy. 80% of heroin users start out with pain pills. Yeah. 80%. Now, I never got to that point, but no, I got to tell didn't. you, I was bouncing doctors. When you go, when you read the book and you can get that book, I put the web, I put the website there. Couple things about the sales of the book. We're partnering with some really cool people that have some different ministries is really what they are. And so we're going to donate a portion of, we're going to take some of the, the sale of the book and we're going to start helping people offset via scholarship. And the reason that we're so passionate about that is when we were in the depths of this yeah, and we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. Um, when we were trying to figure out what to do, first of all, places to go are really hard to find because the affordable places are packed, yep. packed. Yeah. Like you're lucky to get a bed. Um, and then if you do, it might not even be like the best place right. as you'll read in the book. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you can afford the nice places, you know, they're like 30 grand for 30 days. 30 so let's tell this part real quick. Okay. So when th this is in the midst and I'm getting into the book here, but I want you to hear this story. We have no idea where to go, okay? We, you'll see the progressive where I'd gotten kind of sober over about a three-year period, and it was he got, all- He got actually sober for a while. Yeah, and yeah. Then he, and then he was kind of sober. Kind of sober, yeah, where I, I was- I thought he was sober. Yeah, yeah, but we were, but at this point I realized, like, I'm secretly behind the scenes in total panic mode because I can't stop, and I've realized I can't stop. And so I'm, Susie and I now have had a kind of an open conversation, but we're looking for places. And so now Susie's online. Let me Google the place. I'm going to Google it. And so we're going and we're looking at all these different places. Well, we end up, this is a true story. This is true. As God, this, when you read this part of the book, you'll remember I told you the story. We are down and we're going downtown and I have sweat pouring from every orifice of, I mean, every hole in my body is and dumping sweat. And I can't sweat. believe he's agreed to go. Right. And so I. he had like a seizure in the garage. Whole the nother story. Room. So what? I mean. So I, I'm panicked and the only way I know at this point in my life to cope with this type of anxiety is to drink. Okay. And so I'm realizing that I'm kind of coming off that. I'm about to go downtown to this place that Susie's found that is, it's basically a, that you're, she's going to commit me to it. He called it cocktail. Camp. Cocktail camp. Anyways, and so I get out of the car and I tell Susie, I go, I got to go get something to drink. Not like that, like water. I'm going to go get some water to drink. Well, and, he, he had, at that time, he had some pretty bad anxiety issues. Massive anxiety. So I take off in a dead sprint. 
this is where I was at, okay? I'm dead sprint to go to the convenience store so I can buy a tall boy and kill the pain that I'm feeling. That's where I was at. And I'm getting him checked in. And so I looked at this little hole in the door, okay, of the place. This is when I finally come back to Susie. I'm like, okay, look. So I'm looking forward like this and I look inside and literally there's people walking around in these like special things. And I later, Susie later tells me that those were straight jackets. And so I go, oh my gosh. So I tell, look at Susie, I go, I'm not going in here. And Susie goes, you're going in there. I go, I'm not going in well, here. first of all, you went a little faster for that story. First of all, I couldn't find him. Like the lady's like, okay, we're ready to go. And I, I he's disappeared. And I like, they had one bed left. I was so excited to be getting him there because I didn't know what to do with him. At, I couldn't have him just dying on my couch at home. And he's gone. So I'm texting him. I'm calling him. He's not answering. The lady's looking at me going, ma'am, I'm going to, we're going to have to give it to the next person. So finally he comes back in. We, I, we get him up there. We walk down this long, I will never forget this. We walk down this long hall. We get to this door. There's nobody there. And it's like a little window with bars on it. And he looks in and he goes, I'm not, I'm not going, going in, in there. there. I go, I'm not going in there. <laughs> and I say, Yes, you're you are. going in there. I go, because I'm not going in there. I, we just filled out all the paperwork. I go, that guy's got a cork on his fork. I'm not going in there. And I said something about 30 days and he flipped out. 30 and days. Then, and then it I was a lockdown facility. She was trying to check me out. I go, I go, what are you going to kick me in the butt? Throw me in there, yell, alcoholic, and run away? I go, I'm not staying here. No way. Oh, so, so that was a bad time. So, but th here's he the deal. did not stay there, no, actually. But story after story of what we learned early on. And if you guys know people that have ever been through addiction, um, and some people have lost that battle. I mean, I have friends of mine that have lost that battle. And so like, I'm here to tell you, we don't care. Like we are putting, we are, I, I don't know any other way to put it then. Give it, give it to you to share with those people that might need it because our ultimate goal is to give them hope. Because man, I almost, almost, I remember driving down the road, should not have been driving. And I remember thinking at this very moment, I could make all this stop if I just jerked the wheel into that bridge embankment. No joke. Like, I'm being dead serious. That's where I was at mentally. I was so, so twisted and locked up. And when you see people struggling from addiction, here's what you got to know. They are in a trap. They don't know what to do. They're feeding, their addiction has taken over their brain. Because like- And I, they're not thinking clearly no, because of all the alcohol or pills. Yeah, and when I look and I see people that are stuck there, I go, like if you're watching cops and you see the meth head living on the side of the street or living in the side of the house, that guy didn't show up one day and go, hey, I'm gonna go get addicted and live in the road. He is in a trap. And so by the grace of God, and if this is the, the, the foundation of this book, by the grace of God, he, for whatever reason, decided to remove that from me. I have still to this day don't know why, but this is part of the reason I'm willing to share it with the world. And I want everybody to know that, and, and I told Susie, I'm not looking to become the poster child for sobriety, but I am wanting to become the poster child for God's saving grace. And so like when you hear it, you have to know that's what motivates us, okay? So so be critical, uh, say whatever you wanna say, because I don't care anyways. And if, if, we've, if you're offended by us being so transparent and so honest, so be it, unfollow us, block us, because you would hate for our positivity. And that's the thing, we're gonna be who we are. We're gonna continue to be happy people. Like this is a success story. And we're hoping that by sharing, other people will experience the same amount of success. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to go, I need you to buy the book. I want you to, if you like the book, I want you to review it. We want to have a drastic- If you don't like the book, we don't want your review. Don't review it. <laughs> but we want to have a drastic impact. Amazon decides based upon the amount of sales quickly and the reviews, positive reviews, if they give it exposure. And so we're hoping and we're pleading to y'all saying, look, Please do this for us because we want to get the word out. If you know people that struggle, put the book in their hand. Say, these are my friends, read their story, it may help you. And maybe they're gonna find some help, but I'm telling you right now, that's what we're asking you to do. And we've never asked, I would never ask anything other than vote on something fun, ever. This is something I'm asking you to do. Uh, we want to get the word out. We want it to be on, and, and honestly, we don't think God has any limits on where he's gonna take the book. 
We don't. I mean, I don't know. We, I'm hoping that it will have such a massive impact that we will be able to come back on and we'll be able to share a success story of other people that have been able to achieve complete sobriety. So there we go. And yeah. one of the biggest things that I, I want to make really clear here too is that there were so many times that I just felt completely alone. And I just, that's why I really want people to know, like, you're not suffering alone. Like, so many people, like, this is a massive, massive problem. I could give you some statistics. <laughs> Chris said I shouldn't give statistics, but I, I could. Like, it is, like, every, like, all these people on here is talking about their mom, their dad, their stepbrother. Their, Y'all, it is affecting so many people and people don't talk about it. And so then people think, it, this is a disease of, it's a family disease and it's shameful. And so you don't talk about it. And so I just want you to know, like, we've been there. We have been, when Chris says that he thought about jerking the wheel, I actually had a phone call with him and it's in the book where I thought, well, this, like, I was worried, like, this is it. Like, he might kill himself. That's Chris, y'all know him. Like he's the most positive, happy, grateful. And grateful. This, and this will explain a lot why we are the way we are now. Like we don't waste our time on petty crap. Like, like we are given this life and we have to make the most of it. And we all spend so much time on this petty crap. And we're just grateful. Like every single day, we're grateful for everything that God's done for us, for his health, for saving him out of this, for restoring our family. So we're just grateful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that's good. So we're out, you guys. We appreciate you hopping on tonight. We really, 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 really appreciate it. We hope that you'll share this video in hopes that someone out there that may be suffering may get a chance to see it. So I just want you guys to know how much we appreciate your support. Thanks for popping on tonight. Uh, and again, the day I woke up dead .com. It's on Kindle. Uh, and it's on Kindle in that. And, and, and again, we'll report back. We haven't decided completely, but we're researching two places. We think we're going to do the scholarships too. So, okay guys, we're out. Thank you. Love you guys.